time to start putting some components back into the body. So what I'll start with is just rubbing a bit of molybdenum paste on the shutter release right there and put the spring back in place need to take my the transfer shaft the shaft that takes the action from the cocking rack at the back of the camera through to the front of the camera and pop that in position it couples to that uh, idler gear here's the little bracket that holds it in place and I've got to put that in place that just sits loosely in position at the moment nothing's holding that there it's just sitting loosely in position up here now the struts well typically I only lubricate the slots at the back of the struts I don't bother putting any grease on the front of the struts because that would be a waste of time it'll all just come off on my fingers while I'm working I'll put a little bit of molybdenum paste on the rod here that the shutter release runs on make sure I've got this round the right way let's hook this round where I can see it hook that over there and swing this struts into position trying not to disturb the bracket that holds that uh, transfer shaft that seemed to go reasonably smoothly I've got four screws that are all the same one will be exceptionally ugly and that can go down under the leather the two best ones should go in the film cassette chamber and the other can go up here so if I pull that bracket into position I should be able to get a screw down through there into the bracket through the bracket and into the uh, struts that's the theory yeah it happened I'll just collapse those struts make sure that comes up through there and I'll get my two screws into the film cassette chamber there they were the two prettiest screws that I was going to use for that job that's one, I'm only doing these up very lightly at the moment it's um, one of those tasks you only tighten the screws up once everything's in place otherwise you won't be able to manipulate things right those three screws are in position the fourth screw goes through here and it goes through here into the bracket on the struts but this washer has to go between the body and the strut so I've got to slide that into position somewhere about there let's just see if I'm looking through the hole here now I can just see that spacer and I can put that fourth screw through the spacer and into the struts now I can do my four screws up the one on the base the one on the top of the camera and the two in the film cassette well so now I have my struts all firmly fitted to the body and that part of the job is done and I can put the uh, focus mount in position it only goes in one way these two little brackets come down in here and here and I've got to make sure of course that I get the, the felt uh, light seal gasket if you like 
make sure that that's sitting flat that looks okay just collapse the uh, struts up on that if I can why is that not wanting to go that's better and then I can get my four screws in there that hold that the struts to the or the, hold the front standard to the back of the uh, the focus mount to the back of the front standard let's get two screws in diagonally to start off with One to go. All these parts have just come back from the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, so they're not laid out in any special fashion. They're just in an untidy heap. There it is. It was hiding somewhere. Four screws are in position, I'll tighten those up. Now there are four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard, so I can pop those through. They're small black screws. They're a bit awkward to get at. The heads are almost always a little bit sad looking. Two of these are good. Two of them are looking a bit chewed up. That's okay. Won't uh, cause us any grief. The screwdriver will do them up nicely. get all four in position and run in before you tighten them up they're all in position I'll just go in and progressively tighten those up of course you're crushing the uh, that felt gasket in behind them so they'll pull up quite tight okay so now our bellows are firmly fixed to the back of the front standard and next thing to achieve is get this focus helical together so I'll take the inner and outer helical get them started run them in check my alignment marks see where I've got to be and I'm round way around there so I know I need to it's a multi-start thread I just need to start that a bit further around of course multi-start threads are also a bit entertaining to get started there I have it that's good when I've got my alignment marks the double one there and the single one there when they're in line the front surface of these two rings are on the same plane so I know that that's started in the correct thread and now I need to put my helical grease on here and put it in place. I usually put a stripe of grease around in about five areas equidistant around the circumference. Well that's the plan. Didn't quite achieve it that time been too busy talking just run that in spread that grease we don't need it everywhere I'll run some on this surface that's where the outer helical runs in the focus mount and let's put a touch where the two guide rods run which are the two slots with the holes in them 
and pop this into place in the mount. Now I know that I have the single scribe mark at the top and the double one at the bottom because that's the way I choose to do it. You can do it how you like. Just check that that moves freely and it does. And I can fit the retainer in place. So the retainer, I just want to wipe a tiny smear of uh, grease on the inside of that and that was probably a bit generous. It just sits on there and there are six small countersunk head screws that hold this in position. Get the screws in position first, the whole six, then you can think about tightening them up. Otherwise you'll struggle. There's a bit of fluff there, get rid of that. The uh, focus helical on this camera was um, exceptionally stiff when we started because it was just uh, all the grease had just dried right out. And hopefully it'll be nice and smooth and free running now. Right, that's my six screws. I can go around and tighten those up. Here I'm supporting the camera by the front standard. So I'm not pressing down on the struts mechanism or compressing it while I'm putting downward pressure on there to keep my screwdriver from slipping. And here is the focus scale ring. That should fit on place in place there. Is that? That's better. I've got my alignment marks top and bottom. There are four countersunk head screws that hold this in position. Do these up very lightly indeed. In fact, they hardly need to be touching until you've got all four in position. And then you can check the alignment and do those screws up. Now the screws, when you do them up, they only need to be very lightly screwed up. You don't need to do them up tight. If you get in there and do them up tight, all you'll do is you'll distort the uh, outer helical and it will make the focus adjustment very stiff. So there's my four screws are in place and I'm looking at my alignment marks and I'm happy with the position of them. I'll just nip those screws up lightly. And you can feel them drop into the uh, little dents that were there previously. Okay, that's good. Now I have got the rangefinder coupler, coupling arm here. It has to go in over the top of these arms so that you can see the coupling screw at the top. And of course two small screws hold this to the front of the, uh, to the center of our focus helical, the inner helical. That means as the inner helical moves inwards and outwards, it pulls this forward with it, which of course pulls the rangefinder coupling forward. Get those two screws tightened up. And we've got the coupling screw at the top. Here it is. I was looking for the wrong thing. It's, it's, bl it's black on this model of camera. Some cameras it's um, nickel plated. I was busy looking for a nickel plated one. Now 
All right, check that's correctly seated, do that screw up. And as I move the focus scale ring now, you'll see that that shifts in and out. That seems fine. The struts collapse nicely, they do. I need to put the, the coupling, the other half of our transfer shaft here with its gear on the front that needs to go in place. There's its cover of course. Right. A little smear of synthetic grease on the inside, some on the outside there. That's the guide bush. Should go through the guide bush. Couple to our shaft. So as you turn it at this end, you can see the gear revolving at the back. Well, what you're seeing there is the uh, small gear, the idler, that uh, couples to the cocking rack once it's in place. So I'll put this in place. There's two chrome screws that hold this in place. If you've made a mess of one of them, because they're not always easy to get out easily, make sure the pretty ones at the top where people can see it, the one down here, no one can really see that. If you've got one that's a bit ugly, that's where it should be. Do those two screws up. Now when the front of the camera is collapsed, you'll see that the shaft actually comes through that gear. Of course that would be hidden by the uh, folding front of the camera. Right, so that's our struts in position. That's our shutter release, focus, nice and smooth. Um, I'll just put a bit of grease, synthetic grease, on the track there where the coupler, little coupling post runs. As the front has collapsed, you'll see that that arm slides back down that track, which allows that arm to tuck back out of the way. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to collapse the front of the camera. That's the front of the camera done. Uh, I could put the door in place now. Better not tip all my goodies out on the floor here. What do I want? I want the wash, paper washer. The other paper washer. Put these springs in that container. Let's have a look at the door. That looks pretty clean to me. That's fine. Okay, I'm just checking the state of this to suit, make sure that the uh, the arms aren't pushed in too far and they're not stretched out too far. If they're stretch, pushed in too far, they'll be too stiff. The action won't be smooth. Now we'll extend the struts out all the way. Put a smear of grease on the pins top and bottom of the door. That's mostly to help locate my paper washers and stop them, stop them falling out while I'm busy trying to assemble things. There we go, they're in place. Now typically I just hook the top arm in position, stretch the door down and hook the bottom arm in position. And that's it. I can get my hinge pins in place. Of course there were two washers. A thicker one at the top and a thinner one at the bottom and our two hinge pin screws. There's one
Oh, there it is. Can't see for looking. Right, I'll put the thicker of the two washers at the top between the door and the camera body. Push that into position. Run my tweezers through there just to line everything up. Put the screw in. And hopefully the screw will start and run in nicely. It did. No arguments. That's the way I like it. And the sm smaller of the two, the thinner of the two washers went down at the bottom. That's a bit of a snug fit, so I've got a, a push to get that into place. That's in place. Lined it up. Take the hinge pin screw, insert that through the body, through the washer, screw it into the door. So there's the front door all in place. And that opens and closes nicely. Now I can put a bit more grease on here in that track at the front. And in the curved track that the door hooks into. Doesn't need much. Now most of it ends up coming off on your fingers fairly promptly. But what works in now is all that's required to do the job. So that's a nice smooth action. And the front opens and closes with a snap because of course our catch is nicely lubricated there. Okay, that's our focus mount all assembled, the doors all assembled, film advance is the next part to deal with. Well normally I lubricate the advance shaft with a bit of graphite grease. I um, like the way this grease sticks to the surface as it doesn't, uh, doesn't run away. I run some on the spring too. And some above the bush. Just check that that's all working smoothly. And it is. Open the back of the camera. Zoom out a bit. Alright. Take the take up spool. Put the bush in place. Put that in the back of the camera. Of course the bush immediately fell out just to uh, annoy me. Let's pop that back in place. Put the film advance shaft in place. Just slides right through the bush through the uh, take up spool. Now there's a slot in this plate on the shaft on the film advance shaft and by convention that always runs to the towards the end of the camera. There's no great pressing need for that to be the case, it just is convenient. Three screws hold this in place. Rotate that shaft around so that it's not hiding that screw position. In case you were wondering, that's the wind, it's not trucks going past. Right, that's okay. Those lobes on the end of that uh, shaft, they are, they hit the latch for the rewind button. 
and um, reset it. And that latch we need to put in place next. So there's the latch and the spring is there and the screw is there. So normally normally I put a little bit of molybdenum paste around the tip of this lever that's the rounded end of the lever I usually just wipe some through at the pivot point for good measure since it's in my hand. This fits in here like that. Spring sits on there. The shoulder screw that holds it in place and holds the spring in place too of course. Goes in there. Going to run that in making sure that the screw goes through centrally and that the lever is free to move. And I'll just do that up tight and now I've got to get the spring in position so I'll just get another pair of tweezers and lift that spring over it's not playing the game That's better. Okay, so you can see how they film advance shaft and that lever interact. Right. At the top of the camera, I need to assemble the clutch. And the clutch's job is to provide some controlled slippage between the take-up spool and the sprocket. Since a uh, film builds up on the take-up spool as you wind film through the camera so the diameter becomes larger so you're pulling film through potentially quicker at that point and if there was no controlled slippage you would end up ripping out the sprocket holes so I'm going to lubricate this with a bit of um, graphite grease That just goes on the inside of that barrel and I've got to find the right pliers and then I can assemble all of that. I've got to change this camera battery too. 